Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a vlog style video but also mainly just a haul <laughs> of showing you all of the really lovely home items I've picked up recently. I realise I now have a real addiction to vintage homeware items and it's a problem but I wanted this video to be a little bit more interesting than just me sitting down chatting to you guys. Um, so I'm gonna go off to a town sort of near to me that has a really good vintage shop and I'm gonna take you around with me. Probably won't chat while I'm there because it's always really quiet and it would be very awkward. Um, so I'm just gonna film little snippets of everything I see and they also have some good charity shops and a really good fabric shop so I will definitely have to have a little look in there. That's where I picked up the fabric for the blouse I made recently on here um, but they don't have it online, I have looked. So yeah, I'm gonna pop over there this morning and then I also have a load of things that have finally come back from my pottery classes and I'm gonna show you all the things I've made over the last year. Um, not everything, because obviously there's some dodgy looking things, um, but the things I'm proud of. Before I go out, I want to share a few things that I picked up in the sale. Some of them I am undecided whether I'm keeping them or not, so we'll see. The first thing I'm definitely keeping are a pair of Sleepy Doe leggings. I picked these up in the sale and I've been lusting after this gorgeous ribbon print for ages. They're just like nighttime pyjama leggings and they've got a really gorgeous thick cuff at the bottom. Everything's made in the UK with the Sleepy Doe brand and I also picked up some baby things for babies that are arriving from friends next year. <laughs> Very happy with my lovely new pyjamas. Just had to change the battery, classic. Already died. <laughs> I made an order on Lululemon. Um, Lululemon is my favorite activewear brand. It is so expensive, ridiculously expensive. Um, I never buy things at full price. They actually have a shop at Bista Village and it's one of my favorite shops at Bista Village. Although even there, some of the things are still not reduced, which is crazy. I found a coat online on Lululemon and it's 100% waterproof. It's a down coat and it's got a hood and it's even got this like really fluffy Thing that you can remove around your neck and it's just oh, heavenly. So I'm still undecided if I'm going to keep it or not because it is quite expensive still um, but it ticks all the boxes that I've been looking for. So here it is, already the colour is a yes from me. It's coming up very red on the camera but it's a much more muted brown. It's like a chocolate sort of colour. It's got a hood, it's got a huge hood actually. So if you have your hair up like I do now, it even covers over your head, which I like because often I have my hair up when I need hoods up. And it's got this little bit of fluffiness here, which can be poppered off. So this feels really nice around your neck. It's super cozy. It's actually, they call it their snow parka, so you can wear it skiing, I guess. Um, and it comes with these funny straps inside. So if you get too hot, you can wear it on your shoulders like that, which I actually think is a very good idea. It's got about a million pockets, which is amazing. And it goes over my bum. It's, I wish it was a little bit longer. They do do a longer version, but it's still full price. And that's about 500 pounds, and I am not spending that much on a coat. I'll put that on in a second for you. Um, but I also ordered a few of their leggings, their flared leggings, to try out. Um, I'm probably gonna send all of these back, to be honest, because I just can't justify the price of them. For the coat, I can justify the price, but the leggings, not so sure. Um, and also, they're almost exactly the same shade as the coat, which might look a bit weird. But they are their flared leggings. Super high-waisted ones. And then I also picked up the pair that are not super high-waisted, and they just seem to fit a bit funny. But let me try them on for you guys. I never know what size to get in Lululemon things. So I got a size US 6, which is a UK 10, because I like to wear jumpers underneath my coats. It is a good coat, and I think I may have found one that ticks all the boxes. And then it stops just above my knee, as you can see. I'm always out walking the dog, and I'm always cold. So this one is perfect, to be honest. 
I really don't know why brands can't just make more things water repellent or waterproof. So yeah, what do you guys think? I think I love this coat. I think it's going to be one of those ones that just lasts me years and years and years and years and years. Um, I have my black puffer jacket, which I wear almost every day in the winter, but it's not waterproof. So this one is just perfect. And it's quite funny actually because my boyfriend pointed out that it is the same colour as Flory. <laughs> so now I'm going to be walking a ginger poodle with me having ginger hair and my coat being ginger. <laughs> Very nicely made. It's got those little cuffs as well at the sleeve. So you can really not let any air in. I could have probably gone one size down in this actually but you never know if I'm going to put on weight in years to come and everything so... I think I will stick with the size 10. Let's try leggings on. In the leggings I always go for a size 4, which is a UK 8. They do just fit so nicely. I'm just going to insert a clip of me wearing them here because it's too hard to show you. These are their 32 inch flare pants. But yeah, these are ones I'm definitely not keeping. I think they just sort of suck to my legs too much. I think it looks a bit odd. These ones are much more flattering as a fit. And these are their groove pant flare and they're the sort of super high rise ones. The issue is, I mean I'm not always going to be wearing a coat with it, but the coat is pretty much exactly the same shape. <laughs> so yeah, that could look a bit weird. <laughs> did also pick them up in this dark brown. This one wasn't in the sale but I got 10% off. Um, I don't know which colour I prefer. I think the dark is better if I'm wearing it with the coat. But I probably won't keep them both because they're so expensive. <laughs> but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below because I literally live in my other Lululemon leggings. They are the comfiest thing in the world. These are the leggings I already own from Lululemon that I wear so much. And this is the colour, it's sort of like a burgundy, a very deep burgundy. And I love them so much. But it's whether I can justify a new pair. I'm going to go grab my bag and everything I need for today and head into town. Just as I start to catch my very soggy outside. I didn't end up wearing my new coat. I don't think I actually bought anything in the shops. 
except I did go to Greg's <laughs> and I got myself a steak bake. Um, so I'm going to sit in the car and eat that. That pastry goodness. Mm. 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 We're back and it's actually the next day because I got home yesterday and this monstrous migraine decided to grace itself across my forehead. So I was completely wiped out for the rest of the day and it made me very grateful to have this job because I just wouldn't be able to do that in a normal job. But yeah, migraine is gone, thank goodness, and I'm going to sit down and chat through all of my handmade ceramics and all of the things I've picked up recently from secondhand shops, vintage shops and then at the end I'll do the Zara home sale things. There is quite a lot of stuff on the floor here, um, so we've got a lot to get through, so get comfortable because we could be here for a while. I'm going to start off with the things that I've made in ceramics this year, and the first one is probably my favourite one that I have had back recently, and it's this little vase with a tiny little opening at the top. Um, I am so happy with how this one turned out. I went for a really random dripped glaze look for this one and the clay that I used has lots of these sort of irony flecks in them that really come through when you fire it and I love the colour that it's gone. It's actually a white glaze that I put on top but because it's such a dark clay it changes to this really gorgeous sort of almost light blue. So yeah I was very proud when that one came back because I just love how it's turned out and I love the way it looks on its own just on the side but also I like it with a little bit of dried flower just sitting inside it like that I think less is more when it comes to these vases in the same clay I have this plate and I love how this turned out I used a former for this and just slab built it and it's so rustic looking yeah I'm so happy with it and I can't wait for the day when I have my own house and I can have a really nice rustic old dresser and put all of these nice little handmade items up on it. This next one I'm also very proud of. I managed to throw a giant bowl. It was again a lot bigger than this and <laughs> it's shrunk so much. Um, but I've just glazed the inside of this one and I left the outside raw and I love the way it's turned out. I like the fact that I just went for a flat bottom instead of doing something fancy and then it's got this tiny little pouring spout that I added on and I just love it. I'm so proud of myself for making this. So yeah, that's my big bowl and it must be insane to think how much clay and how big you must have to have bowls for them to be big bowls. <laughs> Very proud of my little big bowl. <laughs> On the subject of bowls, I thought I'd show you some other little ones I've made. So these were in a clay called Buff, which is this sort of, you can see the colour of the clay at the bottom there. Um, and I love using this clay, it's so nice and soft for throwing with. And I just glazed these all in the same white. And isn't it crazy how this is the same glaze as the other ones, but it just really depends on the clay as to how it comes out. I love the size of these little bowls. and. I'm really proud of how I've turned some of them at the bottom with their little foot rings. And then I love the shape of these too, how they've sort of got the flat rim at the top or slightly angled out rim. And they stack, which is very handy for storage. And then sometimes you have happy little accidents. I was trimming this bowl and I trimmed a little bit too much on the bottom and I made a hole. So I thought, you know what, it's meant to be a colander. <laughs> so I made this one into a colander and just added a load of little holes into it and I think it's turned out very cute. I have lots of random little items and I actually have quite a lot that I'm just not going to show in this video because they're quite similar or they're just not that exciting. Um, so I made this little jug, this was in the last batch that came back and I love how it looks like a tiny little milk churn. And I think I'll probably put some little tiny flowers in it when I start growing flowers again this year. Got some more plates. These ones were thrown on a wheel this time instead of just being slab built. And they're in the buff clay. And I love how these ones turned out. I managed to get this one really thin, which is quite hard to do. Um, 
in my books they're usually quite chunky plates um, but yeah it's always hard to know how thin to go but this I'd say is perfect and I don't know if I'll be able to do it again <laughs> but here's what they look like up close again I love the rustic look to them and I like to just keep them simple with a little lip up at the side. I made a little cup that has sort of these indents for holding. <laughs> you could use it as a mug or a cup. Then this mug is probably one of my favourites that I've made. Um, it's just a very small little cute mug in a white clay and then I just did this black and white print around the side and I like the sort of chunky handle but it's not too chunky. I did make a similar one but this one has a super chunky handle and I quite like the chunkiness. I was sort of trying out different trends that I'd seen on Instagram um, so to see what I liked making and I did like making this really chunky mug. It's quite fun. But yeah I don't know if I would make more with the chunky handle. I just think it's a bit, I don't know, it's not really my style, I don't think, whereas this one is a little bit more refined and sort of nicer to hold in the hand as well. I also made one of those very organic looking mugs that I built by hand and I like how this has turned out but I don't think I'd make many more like this. I think I just prefer throwing on a wheel and having everything looking as symmetrical as possible. <laughs> so I think that's all I'm going to share from what I've made for my pottery this year. Let's move on to vintage homeware. Um, I'm going to show you the things that my boyfriend bought me for my Christmas. And when I say my boyfriend bought them for me, I mean I found them on eBay and told him that they were my Christmas present. <laughs> if you've been here for a while, you'll know I have a real obsession with vintage Laura Ashley. And it's often very hard to get hold of those things. Um, but I found a listing on eBay which had a load of Laura Ashley tableware. And usually I see this print in a blue, and I've seen it a lot of places in blue or pink. And I don't really mind blue and pink, but they don't really go with my theme anymore. And then I found the brown. And so I picked up a load of these items. She didn't have many listed, and she's literally the only person that's listing them in the UK. Um, I did find some more on eBay, but they were asking quite a lot for them, and I was like, it's not really worth that. So I got two of these side plates. Sadly, I can't find any dinner plates in this print but if you want to search for them this is what you can search at the back. If you're in America then they had a lot of this on eBay so just search for Laura Ashley Johnson Brothers tableware and then I also picked up one of the serving dishes and then I actually went back and bought three more so that I had four of these bowls because they are the perfect size for ramen and also come with a lid so when you're serving ramen you can be like here go <laughs> i love that the print is all the way around the inside it's not on the outside but is on the inside and i just thought it was so sweet and and i love the little handle at the top it looks like a, a flower or an acorn of some sort not too sure what it's meant to be but i just loved it so much and the seller was so lovely. I will actually link the seller down below and anything she's got left because she's so nice. If you're in the UK, you can just message her if you want to buy multiple things and she will put it in the listing for you. And it's just, yeah. I also got two of these oval dining plates, which I'm gonna use as like serving dishes on the table. And then the final thing I bought from that set was the gravy boat, which I love and it's quite funny because now I realize I have a real thing for jugs and gravy boats. <laughs> I have so many jugs and gravy boats that it's becoming a bit of a problem um, so I'm having to start giving them to people. <laughs> I think it's gonna look really good on a dresser one day. Then my most recent find was actually this old cast iron coffee grinder and I was on my own in a antique shop having time of my life and I saw it and I sent a picture to my boyfriend because his mum has a wooden version of this and they use it as their pepper grinder and so he was like get it 
Um, so we got it and he bought it off me, so it's technically his. <laughs> but I thought I'd share it because it's pretty cool and it's an idea if you're looking for a pepper grinder. It grinds up the pepper really well. We just put the corns at the top and then it comes out into the little drawer at the bottom, which I can't take out right now because it's so heavy. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was pretty cool and if you're looking for a pepper grinder, maybe look for vintage coffee grinders. He did have to take this all apart to clean it properly, but I mean, he's clearly got it back together. <laughs> so I think it's very cool. I had to take the jumper off because the sun is streaming into this room, which I am not complaining about, um, but I'm getting very hot. <laughs> Next thing I picked up when I went down to Lewis for Christmas, and this was in one of the antique shops. That it's this amazing ceramic bowl, it's very big, and it's in this very interesting, really dark clay, and then it's got a gorgeous green glaze inside, and I just couldn't leave it in the shop. I just fell in love, and now it sits on a table, and it just looks amazing. This is my little Facebook Marketplace find for the last month, and it's just a little enamel milk churn. It's got a little bit of rust inside, so if I used it for flowers, I, it, I mean, it might be okay, but I'd probably put a glass jug or jar inside it and then put the flowers in them. But yeah, for five pounds, can't go wrong, and it looks great on my shelf. TK Maxx has been great for finding things like this over the last few months. Um, nice jars that have actually been discounted quite a lot. Um, so I've picked up a few of these and these are the Le Parfait brand ones. Um, I just think they look really cool and slightly vintage. It's really interesting that it's got the seal inside. Whereas the, um, oh, what are they called? The Kilner ones have like sort of that really loose lid and then the screw on bit on the outside. Um, but this is just sort of completely encapsulated inside, which I think is really interesting. Not that I do any major canning stuff. <laughs> Moving on to Zara Home, I am always so excited for their sales. And over Christmas and New Year, I was spending a lot of time thinking about what I was gonna order. <laughs> and I was very sad when a few things looked like they went out of stock on the Zara website. But, little trick, if they're out of stock on the Zara website, have a look on the Zara Home website because they're usually still in stock. So the first thing I picked up were two oil cravats. This one is just the coolest little thing. I feel like this is the sort of thing you'd find at a little Italian restaurant for the olive oil. So I got this one for olive oil and this one for rapeseed and I just love how simple this one is. With the little stopper at the top, such a delicate glass and I just thought it was stunning so I picked up those. I then picked up a candlestick holder. I'm not 100% sure about this one so I think I might hang on to it and give it as a gift to someone um, for a birthday or something because it is very pretty but I just don't need it. <laughs> I realise I fall in love with very random things and I fell in love with this teapot. I just thought it was beautiful and I love how the lid has sort of like a rustic tiny little hook and it doesn't look, it sort of looks handmade but it's not handmade and it was quite a good price and I thought when I have the girls over for tea I can use my teapot and I really love having some really really white pieces balance out a lot of the sort of dusky vintage items that I have um, so yeah I'm really happy with this picked up one of these plates. I've seen them for a long time on the website and they've not come into the sale. So this is the only full price thing I bought and I couldn't bring myself to buy any more because they're so expensive. But I thought I'll get one and that will satisfy my craving. I don't need any more unless they're a crazy price in the sale one day. Then the thing I'm probably sending back is this tablecloth. Um, I may keep it and give it to someone as a present but it just didn't turn out the colour that I thought it was going to be. I also bought some napkins to go with it, but the napkins actually go really well with my current tablecloth, so I'm going to keep the napkins but get rid of the tablecloth because I don't need it. It's actually a very similar colour to my tablecloth already, so I definitely don't need it. But I am going to keep the napkins because they're in the sale and they go really nicely with my current tablecloth, which is perfect. That was quite the haul. I do feel quite tired after that. <laughs> There we go, those are all of my new 
home items and some of the things I've made I realize that that is a lot of stuff but these are all collected over the past like three or four months so not too bad <laughs> yeah I just can't wait for the day when I can put them in my own house um, I mean there are in this house, we are renting this house, um, but I don't want to buy a big giant dresser to go in this house because it would just be silly. Because we're going to have to move at some point and that would not be a fun thing to move. So yeah, I think I'm going to end this video here. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any requests of what you want to see next in the comments down below. Um, maybe like a styling video, a home styling video. Although saying that, we don't really have the best space in this house. It's not what we would choose to have for styling. Or maybe I can do some more baking videos and then I can get to use my nice things in the baking video. Um, I was thinking of actually doing um, what I eat in a day, if you guys think that would be fun. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video.